Hey sportsman, John Bergsma here from Fisherman's Digest. We've got our hot bites fishing report. We've got snow on the ground. We've got colder weather than what they kind of predicted. We're after New Year's now. We've got five great reports. We're going to start on just some inland lake waters in the central part, right around that Cadillac, Nuego, just central lower peninsula. We got Lee Gould, who has done a guest report and has got some great tips for us. Then we're going to move over to the Manistee River. Captain Alex Bialik says right now the steelhead fishing on the Manistee has been solid, solid, solid. Not short of fish at all. They've been biting good with these moderate temperatures. And also just a couple of the small lakes in their area starting to really show up with some ice fishing. Then we're going to jump over to Saginaw Bay. We got Zach Watts and the Mitten Madness group. And Zach gave me some great tips on marina fishing along Saginaw Bay. Now, obviously the bay isn't frozen, but we've got some random marinas that are froze up enough to catch fish. Zach went out and grabbed some really nice bluegills, and uh, we'll talk about his presentations for that. Then G Captain Gene Curvin over in the Osabo River has got a great bite going on the Osabo as well. And we're going to drop down just a few miles south of the Osabo to the Taos, the bay and the port of Taos. Guys are still open water fishing. That's right, open water fishing for walleye and lake trout right out front of Taos uh, in their boats. And, you know, they're going to keep doing it as long as the weather stays the way it has been. Then we're going to end up in Huron, Ohio. Captain Gary Zart has been out. He has never, ever pulled. He's pulled his big boats, but he's got his little boats in the heated barn. And I'm telling you what, guys, this is crazy weather, but Gary is still taking charters out fishing, still whacking the tar out of them. Five great reports, totally unusual year. We've got open water trolling on Lake Erie and we got ice fishing just a few hundred miles north. Stay tuned. So hey, we chatted for a bit with Lee Gould. He's a good friend of the show. Uh, and he's a really avid ice fisherman. And so he took us out fishing in a couple of different locations. Him and his gang went out fishing basically around Osceola County. And then they bumped over towards Nuego County and Lake County. And I'll tell you what, they really just are, have, as you see the pictures go across the screen, you get the idea. This is just a group of guys going out and having a great time ice fishing and looking for small lake fish. That's right. So what Lee did was rather than target the big prolific ice fishing lakes, him and his group went to some smaller lakes, you know, more cottage style lakes, you know, you know, three, four, five hundred acre lakes rather than the big dogs. And what they found was some really good safe ice, three to six inches of ice, depending on where in the lake you were at, and really good mixed bag of perch, bluegills, and crappie. Now, Lee's biggest tip to everybody right now in, in, in this report is when you're going out and you're exploring, because they fished some lakes they hadn't necessarily fished before, and that is, is early equals edges. And what that means is, is that when you go out to a lake, try to set up where you're on an edge, whether it's a break line of a drop-off edge, whether it's an edge of where there's weeds to no weeds, those type of edges are really critical when you're trying to locate early season fish. Now, whether it's bluegills or crappie or perch or pike, same principle applies. Those fish are working the cover, still trying to find the, the game fish. Uh, you know, whether you're pike fishing and you're setting a tip up, up, you know, you're, you're always trying to set up close to structure. It's kind of, if you can kind of get it in your head, that open water concept of fishing in and around structure. It's really a lot the same when you're ice fishing, where you're trying to locate structures that are gonna hold fish. Sometimes the structure is a depth, you know, sometimes it's an area of soft bottom, so, you know, where there's no apparent structure, but the structure itself is soft bottom where you've got activity of, uh, of uh, you know, microorganisms coming out of the bottom or you still have activity of crayfish, you know, that are moving around. Even in the cold of the winter, you'll still get activity. So edges equals, early equals edges, according to Lee. Now, as you see the fish going across the screen, 
Uh, he was using some small, if you want to know what was Lee using as they moved through these lakes, they really stayed locked down on four millimeter uh, tungstens and microplastics from the Jawjacker company. So really small microplastics. Uh, that seems to be a big ticket right now. And a lot of guys are doing both, meaning they're, they're adding color and bulk uh, to their jigs with the plastics. And then they're still going ahead and tipping them with something. Uh, a lot of guys I notice now uh, who quietly say this, and I'll loudly say it, is they're taking maybe uh, some minnows and they're cutting the bottom belly from behind the tail, uh, in front of the tail section off, and they're actually tipping their tungsten and plastic with cut bait. And that cut bait acts as a really good scent and a really good attractor, maybe even just getting a little bit of the fuzz of the tail off, off of their minnow. So rather than just hooking the minnow on itself, they're actually downsizing that bait and adding it to plastics, therefore giving it color, I mean, giving it scent and action along with the color that the plastic br brings to the game. So move around small inland lakes. You've got a lot of frozen lakes now. I'd basically say from Highway 10 north, you've got a lot of the smaller lakes froze up uh, and you still wanna be careful, super careful. I know that Portage Lake, there's a little bit in Manistee County, there's a little bit of, uh, safe ice but not much so guys be careful go in groups bring your small tungstens bring your bring whatever flavor of microplastics you want bring your live bait and just go have a good time because i'm telling you what the bite right now on the smaller lakes for crappies and panfish is out of sight Wyandotte Lure manufactures soft plastic baits and fishing tackle right here in the Detroit area. Our famous original Wyandotte Worm and the new Motor City Minnow are made with our own special blend of material that is soft enough for a fish to bite, but durable enough to use all day. Our baits are available in over 30 different fish catching colors. Just another reason why Wyandotte Lure is known as the king of the river. Go to WyandotteLure.com or ask for them at your local bait and tackle store. So our next stop is Captain Alex Bialik from Fireplug Charters. Now Alex lives right there in the Manistee, Greater Manistee area, the town of Manistee. Fishes that area pretty much all of his all year round for whether it's open water trolling on the big lakes or inland lake fishing, which Alex does a ton of, including, yep, guys, ice fishing. And right now he also spends a bunch of time on the Manistee River for steelhead. Alex tells me that the bite on the Manistee has been very consistent this fall. It hasn't been like a lot of times you'll get that bonsai run and then it'll fall off the face of the planet. Nope, Alex says he's getting good quality fish on every single trip. And that's kind of a good thing because when you're going out on the river, the last thing you wanna do is get skunked. And you know, in, in past years, it, it kind of seemed like it was real boom and fall, but the water levels have been very steady. We haven't had a lot of like massively cold temperatures, which really kind of locks the, the fish up a little bit and slows their bite down. We've had very moderate temperatures in the 20s, even the 30s. That's made for some really good steelhead fishing. So if you're looking to get out on the river, Captain Alex from Fireplug can get you out there. He can also get you out there if you give him some lead time, he can get you out there on the hard water. Now, uh, what's the situation in Manistee right now for the hard water? Bear Lake is iced over. And, you know, Alex, for Alex's uh, money, he says it's not totally safe yet. He'd like to see another good uh, four or five days of cold weather to really get Bear Lake to be safe. Some of the smaller inland lakes, you know, the 50 and 100 acre lakes that dot through Manistee County, those are pretty safe and those are frozen up pretty good. Uh, the east end of Portage has got some ice on it, but let me tell you what, there's, there's visible open water in the majority of Portage Lake yet, so uh, I wouldn't put Portage on my uh, stop and fish there in the next week calendar because it just needs another couple of weeks of cool weather to really lock that lake up and seal it up good. But there's gonna be some really good perch fishing that does happen once that happens. So stay tuned with us, we'll have it. Alex will report on that as soon as it happens. But if you're looking to just get out, whether it's steelhead or out just bluegill and pan fishing in the greater Manistee area, give Captain Alex a call. He can get you out there. So right now, it's just river fishing with some really small inland lakes. 
You know, every fishing boat needs a place to put rods, store rods, and have rod holders to go fishing, and the Anger Quest Family Fish has that in spades. I'm Captain Lance Valentine, and here on the Family Fish, I'm going to show you the integrated arch. We've got the ability to put up to five adjustable Trax Tech rod holders on each side so we can run offshore planer boards. We've got rod storage across the top, the ability to put in lights, radar, VHF radio antennas, and any accessories we need to turn this family fish into a hardcore fishing boat. Check out this and all the other great features on AngerQuest at your local AngerQuest dealer. So our next stop is a really fun report, and I've always wanted to, to talk to Zach about this. We're talking with Zach Watts from um, Mitten Madness. Uh, he and his group love to get out ice fishing, and they spend a lot of their time over on the southeast corner, uh, whether it's Saginaw Bay or Lake St. Clair and those marinas and those bodies of water over there during the hard water period. So Zach uh, told me that he slipped out last week and got on some first ice marina fishing on the Saginaw Bay area. Now, he told me, caution everybody right away. This, this is not like 100% safe in every marina yet. Uh, this has been a really screwy year. But he got out, and as you'll see some of these pictures going across, he stumbled into some really nice fish. Now, I think he was up... Uh, up on north of Pinconning uh, in one of those marinas up there. He was kind of tight-lipped about it, which I don't blame him for being, but rest assured, he said he was on the western side there of Saginaw Bay in one of those marinas, and he said he got into some very nice bluegills. It wasn't fast and furious, to be honest, uh, Zach said. It was not like lights out hand over fist. They had to work hard to get 20 fish, but as you can see by the size, they were the right 20 fish. So how is he doing it? He's doing it with super small presentations, Widowmaker um, uh, tungstens and baby guppy color, a real bright colored uh, roadside minnow called baby guppy. Now you'll see it in one of the, one of the fish's mouths there. It's kind of a really nice chartreuse -ish with a orange on it. He said he seemed to think that really made a difference because the, the, the water in the marina struck him as being just a little bit dingier than what he would like. And so uh, that bright color really paid dividends. And I also think that's why Zach thought maybe he didn't catch quite as many fish as he normally does when he finds a bite going on in a canal or a marina is when you get water clarity that's a little bit tough then you, you're, the numbers in fish catching seems to go down. But guys, if you're thinking about getting out ice fishing and you're a little frustrated by the calm uh, or, the, or the moderate temperatures that we're experiencing, pick out a marina, keep an eye on a marina or two. When they slick over and they freeze up hard enough you know, to support you guys moving around on them, marinas are a great option early and late season Fish will come back into the marinas at the end of the season as well. And let's be honest, with the weather temperatures, water temperatures, and weather the way it's been, we might not get a full-blown froze over Saginaw Bay. We might get nothing more than some areas of shoreline ice that's safe enough to walk out to maybe four or five feet. But I, I just don't think, based on what I'm seeing, that we're going to get the, the whole bay froze up where guys are going to be just moving around with four-wheelers and sleds and having a great time. It just doesn't look like it when you look at the long range. So these marinas are going to become a critical option to guys who absolutely got to get the ice fishing out of their system. So, again, cover the whole marina, Zach also told me. In other words, don't just be content to go fish right next to a pole somewhere. Um, a lot of times those fish will move around the marina and you can find them right out in the open area of the marina just as easily as you can find them close to the docks. So it's not just about drilling some holes by the docks and the poles themselves. Sometimes it's about getting into the open deeper part of the area and you can stumble into a really nice group of fish. So marina fishing is going to have to be on everybody's agenda. Uh, pay attention. Zach's going to come back and do a couple more reports for us throughout the course of the season. We'll look forward to that. But Widowmakers, uh, Little Tungstens, and Baby Guppies were the ticket for him this past week. Be careful, but look at marinas as a real option when you're along that Saginaw Bay and Lake St. Clair shoreline. Canals, marinas, and cuts. Hey, we'll see you next week. Are you in the market for a new trailer? For all your trailer needs, big or small, visit Beck's Trailer Superstore on Highway 127 
north of St. John's. So the next report comes to you from just up from Saginaw Bay, and that's the port of Tawas all the way up to Oscoda. Now, what's going on there? We got Captain Gene Curvin over on Oscoda on the Osabo River just having a great winter, very similar to Captain Alex over in Manistee. Gene says this has been a very solid, very fishable winter over on the Osabo. And one of the reasons is obviously the very moderate, very acceptable temperatures that you're dealing with when you're out there. You know, a lot of times fishing in January can just be brutal just because it's so cold. And when it gets that cold, it also kind of minimizes how the activity of the fish and just how many you're going to catch. Well, guess what, guys? Call Gene up on the phone, Calypso Sport Fishing Charters. Get out there and get out on the Osabo River. It is one of the most pristine rivers you have ever seen. It's got wildlife on the shorelines. It's always an experience being in the boat. Gene's a master boatsman when it comes to navigating the river and putting you on the fish. Now, how's he doing it? Well, if I know Gene in my last conversation with him, he's combination fishing, whether he's floating, uh, below a bobber, whether he's casting spinners or whether he's hot shotting, one of those three is what Gene's going to be doing. I would suspect probably hot shotting right now with the moderate temperatures and the ability to sweep those crankbaits. He loves that wiggle wart and that wee wart. And plus, when fish hit a crankbait, it's like they smash it and they're jumping out of the water. It's just such a, it's such a rush and such an excitement to catch them that way. And like I said, Gene's a master at it, so get over there. A second thing to talk about in that Tawas region, just south of Oscoda is the port town of Tawas. Now, Tawas offers something that normally we don't talk about at this time of year, but guess what? Moderate temperatures, a lack of ice, shoreline ice in the bay and around the marina has guys out literally open water fishing still at Tawas. I just saw some pictures come across my feed yesterday. Guys are out there, they're casting glide baits, they're casting spinners. They're casting, some guys are even still, uh, on the days above freezing, are still out there trying to weighted fly, with weighted fly line, uh, do streamer fishing as well. Um, you know, you've got lots of fish in the area, and the glide bait to me is, uh, on this type of weather circumstance, would be a great bait uh, to use, or casting a spinner. Because you've got really, really good numbers of fish pressed right into the marina, right tight to shore going on right now. You could also jig them, uh, I suppose, but I like that glide bait presentation where you can cast a long ways and you can rip and let that thing glide back and rip. I'm telling you the fishing right now for lake trout and walleye combination fishing right out of the port of Tawas, not very far, obviously. We got brutally cold temperatures and it's not comfortable to drive around. But again, the whole marina and also just the shoreline water right outside the marina is really filling up with some really good lake trout and walleye. They're not that tough to catch. You got to pick your days, obviously. And remember, when you show up to the ramp, uh, you might need some salt with you. You know, if it freezes up in the afternoon after you pull your trailer out, you know, that, that slicked ramp can be tough to negotiate. So always remember a bag of salt when you're going to go put in sub-freezing boat. But right now, Tawas Harbor still kicking out open water fish. Are you already thinking about summer? Thinking about that new boat or pontoon? Now's the time to get your best preseason deal during the Summer Dream Sale event going on at Lakeside Motorsports and Nelson's Speed Shop. Order your dream boat now and be the first to get it on the water. Michigan's pontoon superstores, Lakeside Motorsports, and Nelson's Speed Shop will help you design your dream boat. Come see the all-new state-of-the-art showroom and service facility at Lakeside Motorsports. Plus, Lakeside and Nelson's guarantee. Honest, fair, upfront pricing, and no hidden fees. Your summer fun begins now. So we're going to end the day in Huron, Ohio, and guess what? Same thing, open water fish. Who in the world would have thought that on January 3 or 4, I'd be doing fishing reports from guys who are still going out every single day, other than Christmas and, and New Year's and spending time with their family, 
Gary Zart from Blue Dolphin Walleye Charter. I know he is still out chartering. I know there's a couple other guys down in the Huron, Ohio uh, region that also have got their heated storage uh, heated up and they're putting their boats in at night and pulling them out in the morning and taking their clients out. Let me tell you what, guys, the fishing here is spectacular right now. I mean, full boat limits of, for everybody in the boat of five pound plus fish are just the norm. Uh, it's not hard if you're going to do it with your own boat. Uh, it's a little tough this time of the year, mostly because these guys who are still guiding have got that ability to um, go drive right back to a heated barn, back their boat in, open all their compartments, and let it kind of dry out and warm back up for the whole 12 hours between charters. And so that's kind of a key, making sure their engine doesn't get damaged. But uh, I tell you what, if you can get down there and get out with these guys, 70 to 100 back on dark bandits, purplish colored bandits, or bandits that are fluorescent contrast colors has been the ticket, 1.2 miles an hour. Simple finding the fish basically go right out of the Huron Harbor about three to four miles out towards the dumping grounds or equal with the dumping grounds, and then just go ahead and do your troll. I mean, it's not rocket science. There is tons of fish there. I'm sure you could go to Port Clinton. I'm sure you could go to Huron. I mean, not Huron, uh, up to Monroe, and you could do the same thing. I think this entire Western Basin is littered with fish right now, and they're all kind of holding in that 70 to 100 back, which is basically, oh, 17 to 21 down. That's just a good normal winter holding uh, depth for these fish. Uh, that way they can feed up and then go right back and hold. But right now, here on Ohio, open water fishing, Pay attention to your, to your uh, look ahead forecast five days. Pick your days. If you need to get out on a charter, Captain Gary from Blue Dolphin can get you out. So, hey, kind of a crazy five fishing reports. I mean, who would have thought it? You know, we're talking about ice fishing one second. We're talking about open water casting in Taos and then trolling down in here on Ohio. But, I, I mean, it's a crazy year. But... It looks like we're going to have at least some semblance of a normal winter here in January once we get to the 15th. I did look at the long range and they're starting to turn that long range into more winter where it's going to be more in that uh, 32 to 25 to 32 degree range rather than up in the mid 30s the way it's been. But have a great, safe new year. Thanks for joining us here on Fisherman's Digest. We really appreciate you following the show. Uh, remember a couple things. We're on year-round now. We're on not only nationally on CBS and Pursuit Channel, but we're also on all your favorite local stations here in Michigan, up in the UP on Marquette 6 on Sunday mornings at 8.30. Over in the West Michigan area of Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, we're on 7.30 Saturday morning on WOTV. Over in Lansing, ABC 53, 7.30 Saturday morning. Up in northern Michigan, 6 a.m. Sunday morning on Fox 32. And over in the Detroit area, 6 a.m. Sunday morning as well on My Detroit 20. So check us out on your favorite station. We're never leaving the air. We're going to be on 52 weeks a year. We hope to pick you up as a viewer. And stay tuned with the show, and we'll see you again next week on the Hot Bites Fishing Report.